Day 317. Lamentations 1-2. How lonely lies the city, once so full of people. She who was great among the nations has become a widow. The princess of the provinces has become a slave. She weeps aloud in the night, with tears upon her cheeks. Among all her lovers there is no one to comfort her. All her friends have betrayed her, they have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile under affliction and harsh slavery, she dwells among the nations but finds no place to rest. All her pursuers have overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, because no one comes to her appointed feasts. All her gates are deserted, her priests groan, her maidens grieve, and she herself is bitter with anguish. Her foes have become her masters, her enemies are at ease. For the Lord has brought her grief because of her many transgressions. Her children have gone away as captives before the enemy. All the splendor has departed from the daughter of Zion. Her princes are like deer that find no pasture, they lack the strength to flee in the face of the hunter. In the days of her affliction and wandering Jerusalem remembers all the treasures that were hers in days of old. When her people fell into enemy hands she received no help. Her enemies looked upon her, laughing at her downfall. Jerusalem has sinned greatly, therefore she has become an object of scorn. All who honored her now despise her, for they have seen her nakedness, she herself groans and turns away. Her uncleanness stains her skirts, she did not consider her end. Her downfall was astounding, there was no one to comfort her. Look, O Lord, on my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. The adversary has seized all her treasures. For she has seen the nations enter her sanctuary, those you had forbidden to enter your assembly. All her people groan as they search for bread. They have traded their treasures for food to keep themselves alive. Look, O Lord, and consider, for I have become despised. Is this nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look around and see. Is there any sorrow like mine, which was inflicted on me, which the Lord made me suffer on the day of his fierce anger? He sent fire from on high, and it overpowered my bones. He spread a net for my feet and turned me back. He made me desolate, faint all the day long. My transgressions are bound into a yoke, knit together by his hand, they are draped over my neck, and the Lord has broken my strength. He has delivered me into the hands of those I cannot withstand. The Lord has rejected all the mighty men in my midst, he has summoned an army against me to crush my young warriors. Like grapes in a wine press, the Lord has trampled the virgin daughter of Judah. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears. For there is no one nearby to comfort me, no one to revive my soul. My children are destitute because the enemy has prevailed. Zion stretches out her hands, but there is no one to comfort her. The Lord has decreed against Jacob that his neighbors become his foes. Jerusalem has become an unclean thing among them. The Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his command. Listen, all you people, look upon my suffering. My young men and maidens have gone into captivity. I called out to my lovers, but they have betrayed me. My priests and elders perished in the city while they searched for food to keep themselves alive. See, O Lord, how distressed I am. I am churning within, my heart is pounding within me, for I have been most rebellious. Outside, the sword bear Abies, inside, there is death. People have heard my groaning, but there is no one to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble, they are glad that you have caused it. May you bring the day you have announced, so that they may become like me. Let all their wickedness come before you, and deal with them as you have dealt with me because of all my transgressions. For my groans are many, and my heart is faint. How the Lord has covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud of his anger. He has cast the glory of Israel from heaven to earth. He has abandoned his footstool in the day of his anger. Without pity the Lord has swallowed up all the dwellings of Jacob. In his wrath he has demolished the fortified cities of the daughter of Judah. He brought to the ground and defiled her kingdom and its princes. In fierce anger he has cut off every horn of Israel and withdrawn his right hand at the approach of the enemy. He has burned in Jacob like a flaming fire that consumes everything around it. He has bent his bow like an enemy, his right hand is positioned. Like a foe he has killed all who were pleasing to the eye. He has poured out his wrath like fire on the tent of the daughter of Zion. The Lord is like an enemy, he has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces and destroyed her strongholds. He has multiplied mourning and lamentation for the daughter of Judah. He has laid waste his tabernacle like a garden booth, he has destroyed his place of meeting. 
the Lord has made Zion forget her appointed feasts and Sabbaths. In his fierce anger he has despised both king and priest. The Lord has rejected his altar, he has abandoned his sanctuary, he has delivered the walls of her palaces into the hand of the enemy. They have raised a shout in the house of the Lord as on the day of an appointed feast. The Lord determined to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He stretched out a measuring line and did not withdraw his hand from destroying. He made the ramparts and walls lament, together they waste away. Her gates have sunk into the ground, he has destroyed and shattered their bars. Her king and her princes are exiled among the nations, the law is no more, and even her prophets find no vision from the Lord. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground in silence. They have thrown dust on their heads and put on sackcloth. The young women of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes fail from weeping, I am churning within. My heart is poured out in grief over the destruction of the daughter of my people, because children and infants faint in the streets of the city. They cry out to their mothers, where is the grain and wine? As they faint like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their lives fade away in the arms of their mothers. What can I say for you? To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? To what can I liken you, that I may console you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For your wound is as deep as the sea. Who can ever heal you? The visions of your prophets were empty and deceptive, they did not expose your guilt to ward off your captivity. The burdens they envisioned for you were empty and misleading. All who pass by clap their hands at you in scorn. They hiss and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem, is this the city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of all the earth? All your enemies open their mouths against you. They hiss and gnash their teeth, saying, we have swallowed her up. This is the day for which we have waited. We have lived to see it. The Lord has done what he planned, he has accomplished his decree, which he ordained in days of old, he has overthrown you without pity. He has let the enemy gloat over you and exalted the horn of your foes. The hearts of the people cry out to the Lord. O wall of the daughter of Zion, let your tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief, and your eyes no rest. Arise, cry out in the night from the first watch of the night. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for the lives of your children who are fainting from hunger on the corner of every street. Look, O Lord, and consider, whom have you ever treated like this? Should women eat their offspring, the infants they have nurtured? Should priests and prophets be killed in the sanctuary of the Lord? Both young and old lie together in the dust of the streets. My young men and maidens have fallen by the sword. You have slain them in the day of your anger, you have slaughtered them without compassion. You summoned my attackers on every side, as for the day of an appointed feast. In the day of the Lord's anger no one escaped or survived, my enemy has destroyed those I nurtured and reared. Hebrews 10 verses 1 to 18. For the law is only a shadow of the good things to come, not the realities themselves. It can never, by the same sacrifices offered year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could, would not the offerings have ceased? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all, and would no longer have felt the guilt of their sins. Instead, those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins, because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, Here I am, it is written about me in the scroll, I have come to do your will, O God. In the passage above he says, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor did you delight in them, although they are offered according to the law. Then he adds, Here I am, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been sanctified through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day every priest stands to minister and to offer again and again the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made a footstool for his feet, because by a single offering he has made perfect for all time those who are being sanctified. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and inscribe them on their minds. Then he adds, Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, 
and offering for sin is no longer needed.